discuss one more binary search tree. I promised last time that it was the final binary search tree, but no, I have one more binary search tree to discuss. And this white file, this is the last binary search tree we will discuss in this course. Okay, this uh, binary search tree is kind of special. It, it allows you to solve some special problems. We will discuss all these problems today. Uh, and this binary search tree is called scalar tree. Uh, so let's first discuss the situation. So let's start from the beginning. So uh, in what situation, uh, usual, like the usual binary search tree, like AVL trees, split trees, and all other trees uh, can be used. Uh, let's remember the problem from the like three lectures ago. You know, when we discussed two dimensional problems on the segment trees. So when we discussed two dimensional problems in Senga trees, we had problems like this. Uh, we have we have a set of points. Let's, let's have eight points uh, like this. We have a set of points, and you want to be able to answer the queries like, for given a rectangle, find all points inside this rectangle. So here is some rectangle. And you need to find all the points inside the rectangle. Maybe you remember this problem from it was when we discussed two-dimensional problems about segment trees. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you don't remember, I'll, I'll I'll just refresh everything in your memory right now. Uh, so, how we solve this problem using segment tree? Uh, we build the following segment tree. We build segment tree by x coordinate. So we. Uh, just have all the x coordinates of all points. And build the segment tree over the x coordinate. So we build segment tree like this. Mm -hmm. Just save some space. So we build segment tree like this, uh, and now in each node of this segment tree, we maintain the lists of all points inside this segment sorted by uh, y coordinate. So we take all y coordinates of all points. So let's say they have one coordinate like this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Just for simplicity, let's have let's have all all y coordinates different and small, uh, and then in each node of this list of this segment tree, you maintain the list of all points in this segment sorted by y coordinate. So here you have something like two, five, three, eight, six, one, four, and seven. On the next level, you have lists of size two. So here you have two and five. Here you have three and eight, here you have one and six, here you have four and seven. On the next level, you have lists of size four. So here you have two, three, five and eight, and here you have one, four, six and seven, and here you have a list of all the points. Like this. Mm -hmm. Do you remember stuff like this? Huh? Again, I need someone to say something in the chat at least every minute, okay? <laughs> just, just, just to keep it live, okay? Uh, so how we solve this problem? Again, if we we can build this tree in n log n time, yeah? So we, we build this tree from bottom to top. So we start from this bottom layer of your tree, build the, all these elements. Now on each next level, we just merge these two sorted lists in one sorted list. We can do it in linear time. So the total time uh, we need to construct this uh, segment tree is n log n. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, how to answer the query? To answer the query, we, we take this rectangle, uh, take its projection on x 
Uh, and have this segment. So we have this segment by X coordinate. Now we make a standard uh, request in this segment tree and find the segments which uh, are inside your segment. So we, again, we make the standard request in this by in, in this segment tree. Again, we start recursion here, go here, here, go back, 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 take this. Now we need to take these three, se three segments by X coordinate. And now in each segment, we find all points inside this range by Y coordinates using two binary searches. So we make binary search by this, uh, the, 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 these two Y coordinates, find them in, the, in this list, and all values inside this segment are inside your rectangle because they are inside your X uh, segment and they are inside your Y segment. Okay? So we can, so again, how we do it? We make one recursive request from here. We start to find these segments. In each segment, we run two binary searches to find left border and right border, and all points between are in our segment. Uh, so we need to have uh, these log n segments. In each segment, we run binary search. So we have so we spend log n time in each segment. So we have log n segments, log n time for binary search. So total time will be request uh, will be log square. And we will also discuss how to update it to, to, to work in, in log n time using cascading, but it's not, not important today. It's not important today. So let's, let's just say that it's possible to do it in log square time. <clears throat> now, uh, this structure is very cool when you have a fixed set of points. So if all points are fixed, uh, then you can spend this uh, log n time to construct this segment tree. And then you just work with this, with this segment tree. Uh, but what happens if your problem is dynamic? So when you need to change something in your set. Uh, for example, if you want to change Y coordinate. Uh, let's say you take some point. <laughs> for example, let's take this point. Let's take this point and move it down let's say, to coordinate two. We have two points with the same coordinates, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. So. So, so we take one point and try to change the Y coordinate of, of this point. How can we do it? Uh, very easy. Uh, we need to take all the lists which contain this point and update this Y coordinate for this list. So we take this list, this list, this list and this list. And in all these lists, we need to remove six and add two, right? So we remove this six, add two. We remove this six, add two. Remove this six, add two here. Remove six, add two. Mm -hmm. So that's how update work. We, again, we iterate over all lists which contain these six. Uh, so we have like log n lists which contain this value, yeah? And in all these lists, we need to update this value. So we will remove the previous value and add the new value in this list. How can we do it? Hmm. Well, let's see. Uh, we need, instead of lists, we need some data structure which maintain the sorted order of the elements and is capable to, to remove the element and add new element. So we need some data structure again which will maintain this list. For this list, we need to be able to remove element and to add new element. And we need to maintain this list sorted. What data structure do we need? Eh, any ideas? We discussed like three of them. <laughs> you, you, need a, you, you need some binary search tree. Yeah? So if you maintain these lists in binary search trees, or set, yes, set, set is basically a binary search tree. Yeah, C++ set is basically a binary search tree. So there is a red black tree inside this C++ set. Uh, so, so instead of instead of having these lists, we will maintain binary search tree in each node. So each of these lists is actually a binary search tree. Now, how to update the value? We take these four binary search trees. In each binary search tree, we remove one value, add one new value. Uh -huh. So total time complexity change 
y, let's say, uh, will be log square. And after this operation, we still can make this request because uh, what do we need to make this request? We need to get to, to iterate over these nodes and each node find left and right border of your segment. You can do it in binary search tree. In binary search tree, you can find all values between left and right border in log n time. Like it's, it's like in segment tree, it's the same way. You find the left border recursively, find the right border recursively. All values be between are the values you need. Cool. So changing y is not a big deal. We just have uh, binary search trees in each node instead of this list. This video will be, all videos are available on my YouTube channel. So if you don't know my YouTube channel, it's link is like in the description. Uh, <clears throat> now, that's easy. But what will happen if we need to change x coordinate? So if we need to take some x coordinate of some point and change it. Uh, this is more tricky because when we change x coordinate, we actually change the order of these elements. So we need to reconstruct the whole tree. So it's complicated. Uh, or what happens, for example, if you want to add new point to your set? So you have these eight points. Let me move this. Uh, just remove these updates. Six here, six here, six here, six here. So, what happens if you add one new point to your set? If you add new point to your set, you need to reconstruct this uh, segment tree, right? But you can reconstruct the whole segment tree. Mm -hmm. What we'll do? We will do it the following way. We will just maintain <coughs> uh, this segment tree, not uh, no, no, not a perfectly balanced set binary tree, but we will allow to make it not so cool, not, not so beautiful. Uh, for example, if we add new point, let's add some new point. Let's add a point here, for example, add point with coordinate 9. So this point is between 6 and 1, right? So between, between these two points, we need to add one new point 9. How can we do it? We will just add one new node. So here we add new node with value 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's split this node. So we, in, in this list, we, in, in, in this leaf, we have only 6, and now we need to have 6 and 9. So let's split this leaf into two nodes, 6 and 9. And now we add 9 to all nodes in, on this path. So we add 9 here, add 9 here, add 9 here, and add 9 here. So again, what happens again? You have, you have your tree. You have some leaf. You have value x here. You want to add one new value. I don't have. I don't want to have value y. Let's have value a and value b. So you have a value a here, and you want insert value b after this value a. So what you can do? You can split this leaf node into two leaf nodes. Put a here. Put b here. And now you can add this b to whole path. So you have all this node to the root. Now you just add this b to all nodes on this path. Cool. Now again, you can make the same requests, uh, but no, now it's not, it's not that beautiful, perfectly balanced binary tree. It's kind of ugly, but still you can make all the requests, right? So again, each node uh, represents some segment of your x-coordinate. 
in each node contains all the points in this segment sorted by y coordinate. Mm -hmm. So it's still a ni ni nice tree, yes? You can make requests like, like before. So again, you iterate all, all this tree. Each node represents some segment. If you need this segment, you take this segment, run two binary searches, find two borders, and so on, and you can answer the same requests. Right? 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 So what's the problem? <clears throat> Again, this is how you add new points to your set, right? When you add new points to your set, you take the closest leaf node, add two nodes here, and add this new value to all lists on this path to your root. Well, you, you, you can update x also. To update x, you just remove point and then add new point. So when you need to remove point, let's, <coughs> let's, for, let's move some points. So, so instead of adding this point, oh, this picture became muddy. Okay, that's fine. So let's move some point, for example. When we need to move Let's take this point five and try to move it here. So we need to remove this point and add new point here. So we add new point here, add this new point to all the lists here. So we add five here, add five here, add five here. And now we remove this point. And we can remove point in the same way. We just remove this point. Uh, we can collapse. No, we just we can, we can just remove it from all elements here. We can remove it from here, remove it from here, remove it from here. And we also can collapse these two leaves into one. If we, if you want to save some space, you can also collapse these two nodes into one. So we can just remove this node. So now this node represents two, and we just removed this five to all. Again, let, 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 let me show you again. So. So you have these two, five, three, eight, six, one, four, and seven. Here we have two, five, here we have three, eight, here we have one, six, four, seven, two, three, five, eight, here we have one, four, six, seven, and here we have everything. And now when you move these five here, what will happen? You remove it from here. <coughs> so you remove it here, remove it here, remove it here, remove it here. So now you have this node two. And here you have three and eight. Ah. So much space, sorry. Eight. And now you need to add this five after this six. So you split this six into two nodes. You have five, six here, five here, six here. And now you have another one here, five, five, six. And here we have, no, here is also one. Uh, and here we have all again. This is how you update the x coordinate. You remove, you remove one node of your tree, and add one new node to your tree. Okay, now, now five is here. <clears throat> and again, you can do it in log square time, right? So you remove five from all these lists. Again, all these lists are just binary search trees. So you need to remove this five from all these binary search trees. And now you add this new value here. So you just add this value to all these binary search trees. So you need to make log n removals from binary search trees and log n inserts in binary search trees. Looks cool, right? What, what, what will be the problem? Any ideas? Yes. 
Space, no, sp space is still linear, so we have linear number of nodes. Again, we, we removed one node and we add one node. So the total number of nodes is the same, right? Again, let, let, let me show. So, I want this operation to work in log in, in log square time. I want this operation to work in log square time. Uh, to work in log square time, uh, wh 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 why 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 this operation works in log square time? Because I have log n layers, right? And when I make operation, I need to make the operation on each layer of this tree, right? So when I make some change or I make this request, I make one operation on each layer of this tree. Mm -hmm. And since this tree was perfectly balanced, I have log, log n layers. So the height of this tree is log n. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so if you make operations like this, like, like you, see, you see here, I, I just increased the height of the tree. And if I make many operations, uh, the height may, may become not, not logarithmic. So if, if I make many changes and all changes need to insert some elements close to this, what is six? here it's six, here it's five. If I move move elements close to single one, so if I take this two, move it close to this six, then again, I will split this leaf node into two nodes and so on. Then I move, take another node and move it close to this six. Then again, I, I split this x, so each time I will increase the height of the tree. So now, Again, now if I move some another nodes to, to, to this state, so I, I can remove this seven and again split this six. And then I can take some two and split again this node. My board is not enough. So, so each time I will increase the height of the tree. So the height of the tree is not, not logarithmic. I need some mechanism to balance my binary search tree, right? <clears throat> right? That's the problem we had when we had binary search trees. When we had binary search trees, if we perform some strange set of operations, we may have unbalanced binary search tree. So we need some mechanism which will balance our binary search tree. Um, look, we, we already solved this problem, right? Let's use some balancing mechanism. For example, let's use AVL trees. So, Let's try to balance these trees using the same mechanism as in AVL trees. What will be the problem? So if we try to rebalance this binary search tree using, for example, AVL sort technique, uh, what will be the problem? The problem will be uh, that when you make rotation, you need to update these sorted lists. And you cannot do it because well, let's see. You have some. You have some node X, and you want to perform binary search rotation, right? So, so we want to rotate this edge. Here we have some subtree A. Here we have some subtree B. Here we have some subtree C. So when you make rotation of this node, uh, you have X here. You have P here. And you have these subtrees A, B, and C here. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when we try to balance our binary search tree, we need to make rotations, right? To rebalance it. But what will be the problem? The problem is that in these nodes, we need to maintain these lists of all values in this subtree. For example, in this X, we have a list uh, which contain all elements in, in subtree A, in subtree B, and X. So we have A, B, and X in some sorted order. <clears throat> and here we have all elements in subtree A, here we have all elements in subtree B, here we have all elements in subtree C, and in this node we have a big list of all elements in subtree A, B, C, and also X and P. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> just say something at least every minute. If you have any question, ask any question. If you don't have any questions, just say, I don't have any question. Just say something, okay?
I'm really nervous when the chat is silent. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, when you make this rotation, you need to uh, maintain this list for these nodes. So now in, in node X, you need to have lists of all, again, of all elements of A, B, C, X, and P. But we have this list here. So we, we can just copy this list from here to here. But in this node P, you need to have list of all elements from subtrees B, C, and node P. And you don't, you don't have this list. So this list, it's impossible to construct this list in, in, in login time. Why it's impossible? Because you need somehow to merge the lists from B, from C and add P. So you need to merge these two lists into one list. You cannot do it in login time. You cannot merge two separate sorted lists faster than in linear time. So that's the problem. That's why you ca that's why you cannot use the techniques we discussed before in this binary search tree because all the techniques we discussed in previous lectures uses these rotations, and we cannot make rotations because in each node we need to maintain these lists, and when we make rotation, we need to build this list, and we can build this list faster than in linear time. A should also be deleted. Why it should be deleted? No, or, or you can take this list and remove A. You, you, can, you also cannot remove elements from this list. So you cannot just split this list and, and remove the whole subtree. So A is a, is a whole subtree, so L, there are a lot of elements here. You cannot remove all elements from this list faster than in linear time. This. That said, it means uh, that we cannot balance these trees using our standard techniques. So we, we, cannot, we cannot build this tree, uh, we cannot balance this tree using all the techniques we discussed. Because all the techniques we discussed before uses rotations in, in all the, in, in avial trees, in trips, in splay trees, all the trees uses rotations to, to maintain the tree balanced. But we can't make rotations because we will break all these lists. That's it. So, what we'll do? We will make another binary search tree, which uh, uses another balancing technique. And this balancing technique do not need to make rotations. That's important. Uh, so we will make some strange binary search tree, which kind of rebalance itself, but without rotations. That's the plan. And this, this tree is a scapegoat tree. Write it here. Let's go. So, how we balance binary search tree without rotations? Very cool technique. Very cool technique. Let's go. We will use one simple property to maintain tree balanced. Uh, we discussed the same property in the home is in the previous home task. If you was in discussion, so we discussed the same problem. So the property is very simple. If we take some node x and its parent p, and let's look on the number of elements in this node. So, so we have some number of elements here, some number of elements here. Uh, we'll take that the size of subtree x is no more than alpha multiplied by size of subtree p. <laughs> Update x when we have a common node before root, so remove and insert must be aware of this. I don't get it. No, if you if you want to update something, you can remove and add. That's always that's always. <laughs> the solution when we need to update something. So if you can remove element and add element, then you can update element. You just remove element, update it, and push it back. 
So I, I, will, I will mostly discuss how to add new element and how to remove new element. And you, when you update, just remove, update, and add back. <clears throat> Again, so that's very simple property. We will take some constant alpha. Alpha will be uh, more than one half and less than one. So let's take some constant alpha. Well, let's say, for example, alpha equal to 1.7. Nice constant value. And we will maintain the property that if you have some child of the node, the size of the child, size is the total number of elements. So the total number of elements in this subtree is uh, at most alpha multiplied by the size of this whole tree. Is it obvious that this property will guarantee that the height of the tree is logarithmic? Should we prove it? Let's prove it. This property guarantees that the height of the tree is logarithmic. Why? Because if you look on some path from the root to some leaf, then the size of the root is n. Yes, you have n elements in the whole tree. Then size of this node will be no more than alpha n. Size of this tree will be no more than alpha square n, no more than alpha cube, cube n, and so on. So, that, so it will no more than alpha power n of n. So if the height of this tree is h. Mm -hmm. But we have at least one work, so, so we, ha we, we need alpha power h n be at least 1. It means that alpha power h should be at least, no at least. We need alpha power h to be at more, at least 1 over m. So just alpha is negative, that's right. Uh, uh, uh. What does it mean? It means that h, yeah, because alpha is less than 1, yeah, that's right. Uh, log 1 of alpha of n, right? No, it decreases not not it, it decreases not not a half. If you have a perfect binary binary tree, then alpha equal to one half. But if alpha is one point seven, it's still balanced binary balanced binary search tree. It will be not perfectly balanced, but somehow balanced. So the height of this tree will be logarithm base one divided by alpha. It's still binary search tree. Okay. Now, well, let's build some. Let's build some good scapegoat tree. Let's build some good scapegoat tree. Well, for example. Again, let's use 1.7. So we start from the root. We have some elements here. I'll just write, I'll just try to draw some tree. Something like this. So here I have three vertex, here I have four vertex. Uh, four multiplied by 1.7 is greater than three. So I need one more here. Uh, 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 here I have three. Let's check. Let's check. So I have one, two, three. Here I have five. Five multiplied by so again. Alpha is one point seven. Uh, so here I could be at at the most five multiplied by one point seven. It's it's three point five, right? So it's it's good. That's good. So this this node is fine. For this node, I have. To, to, to seven. So this node should be at most seven multiplied by one point seven. It's four point nine. So this node is too big. Let's add something here. So now it's eight. 
Now it's 8, so this node should be at, at most 8 by 1.7. It's 5.6. So this node is fine. This node is fine. What we have here, we have 1, 1, 3, 1, boom, 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 5 again, that's fine. 5 and 3 is cool, yeah? And this node, because we have 13, we have 14 here. So this node should be at most 14 multiplied by 0.7. It's enough, yeah. Okay, again, let, let, let me show. This tree is a valid scapegoat tree for constant alpha equal 1 point or 0 0.7. So for this constant, this is a valid scapegoat tree. Why this is a valid scapegoat tree? Because if we take if we take each node and look on the size of this node and size of the parent, yeah? so here we have eight. So the size of this node should be no more than eight multiplied by 0.7. Eight multiplied by 0 0.7 is 5.6. Mm -hmm. So 5 is less than 5.6. So this node is valid. Now let's look on this node. This node should be at most 14 multiplied by 1, well, 0 0.7. I hate arithmetics. So it's 7 plus 2.6. So it's 9.8, right? So 8 is less than 9.8. So this node is okay. And so on. So for, for each node, you just, just check that everything is cool. If everything is cool for each node, then the height of this tree will be at most this logarithm. Cool? Huh? Huh? Just say that everything is cool. <laughs> cool, right. So, very simple property. Now we'll try to maintain this property when we change our binary search tree. So what happens when we add new nodes to our binary search tree? For example, if we add, let's say if we add new node here. So we had this binary search tree, it's balanced, it's cool. And now we just add one new node and just ruin everything. Ah. Alpha is 0 0.7. Uh, now, what will happen when we add one new node? We need to update all the sizes on this path. So we just walk this path to the root and update all the sizes. So this size is now one, this size is two, this one is three, this one is four, this one is six, this one is nine, this one is 15. We can do it in log n time, right? I'm trying to do everything in log n time. That's the plan. So again, I add new node. How, how to add new node in a binary search tree? Again, you find the place where you need to add new node and add the new leaf in this place. Yeah? So just add a new leaf here. Now you walk to the root and update all the sizes. You can do it in log n time because height of the tree is log n. Hmm? Right? So now, Let's try to maintain the property. Let's find all the nodes uh, which are invalid now. So let's find all the situations when this constraint is not, is not satisfied. Uh, for example, this node. For this node, this node should be no more than 4 multiplied by 0 0.7. 0 0.7. So it's 2. Point. Let me just use another. Uh -huh. And its size is 3. So three is more than 2.8. So this, this node is invalid. For this node, so we have, this sun is too big. This, the size of this sun should be at most 2.8 and the size is three. So this node is invalid. Uh, now let's look on this node. Uh, this node is six, so this should be no more than six multiplied by 0.7. It's 4.2. So this node is fine. Uh, this node, here we have, Eight, nine, here we have six. Nine point six, 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 six. 
it's 6.3 yeah? so this should be at most 6.3 so this is fine for this node let's see this should be well it's fine yeah. it should be at most 15 massive faces oh i hate arithmetic so it's 10.5 right mm -hmm. so again we walk to the root and check if the property is satisfied for each node if the property is not satisfied, let's just mark this node. This node is not now invalid. Mm -hmm. Now, how can we validate this? So, so we need to change this node to make it valid again. So we need this property to be satisfied again. We will do it in a very simple way, without any rotations, without any stuff. What we'll do? We will take this whole tree. and just rebuild from scratch. Very simple plan. So we take these four nodes, cut them from the whole tree, and just rebuild them to make a perfectly balanced binary search tree. So we cut these four nodes and make another binary search tree like this. So. So. so we take four nodes. How to, how to build perfectly balanced binary search tree of four nodes? We take a root, uh, then we need to, so the root must have size four. And now we need free, we need to put three more nodes. So let's split them evenly. So we split, for example, two nodes to left, one node to right. So let's put two nodes here and one node here. And here we have one node here. And And now we take this perfectly balanced binary search tree and just put it back instead of this binary search tree. So we take this whole subtree, cut it away from the, search, from the binary search tree, rebuild it from scratch, and put it back instead of this subtree. And again, copy, build it from scratch, and then put it back here. So now here we have this cool balanced binary search tree. That's the whole plan. That's the whole plan. So that's how you balanced scapegoat tree. Yeah, let me let me draw some pictures. So what happens? You, you add new nodes to your binary search tree. So this is new node. This is the path to your root. <coughs> After you add this new node, some nodes may become invalid. So some nodes are invalid. Let's take the topmost invalid node. So Uh, let's take this node and the whole subtree of this node. So we take the whole subtree of this node. We have this node and something here, and so on, something here. So this node is invalid. Let's take the whole subtree and just build another subtree of the same size, but perfectly balanced. So build a very cool, perfectly balanced binary search tree, like this. Very balanced binary search tree. And now just put this perfectly balanced binary search tree instead of this binary search tree. That's all, that's the whole plan. Well, let's, let's try one once more. Well, let's add one more vertex. So let's try to add one more vertex here. So we we'll add one more node here. So now here we have one, two, three, five, seven, then sixteen.
So this is invalid now. Cool. So now this node is invalid. Because this should be at most 7. Wait, point, point 0.7, it's 4.9. So this node is too big. Mm -hmm. So if this node is invalid, we just take this whole subtree and just rebuild the whole subtree. Well, how, how can you rebuild the whole subtree? We need to build subtree of size 7. So let's take this subtree and build a perfectly balanced binary search tree of size 7. So we take this 7. We need to make two children, so children must have size. So we want to have the children of the equal size. So we have, we need to have six elements. So we have put three elements here, three elements here. Now in each of these subtree, we need to put two children. Here we have two children. One here, one here, one here, one here. Ta-da! That's all. That's how you update the scapegoat tree. You, again, you add new element, you add new element, iterator all parents of this element. If you have some invalid node, then you take the whole subtree, build a perfectly balanced sub subtree of the same size, and put this perfectly balanced subtree instead of your previous subtree. Again, you stop. You stop talking in, in chat, so I continue. I, 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 just, I just repeat myself. So, okay. Let's hope everything is clear by now. That's all. That's the whole plan. So now let, let's calculate time complexity. Let's calculate the time complexity. Uh, what will be the time complexity? Uh, well, let's see. What time we need to recalculate the whole tree? So if we have tree of size x, let's see. Let's let's see. We have node v, yeah, and recalculate uh, v equal to size of v. Let's say it's x, yeah. So let's say. Uh, we need to recalculate this node. The size of this node is x. So to rebuild uh, the, the whole subtree, we need linear time to build this by perfectly balanced binary search tree. Yeah? So we can build this tree in linear time. So we build in linear time, so time will be big O of x. Uh, now, how often do we need to recalculate the whole tree? Well, let's see. After we recalculate the whole tree, so we, when, we, when we recalculate the whole tree, if the size of this tree is x, then since it is a perfectly balanced binary search tree, the size of both children is at most x over 2. Mm -hmm. So when will be the next time we need to rebalance the same node? So let's look on this node. We just rebalanced this node, built a perfectly balanced binary search tree. Uh, let's see when will be the next time when we need to rebalance the same tree. So when we need to rebalance the same tree, it means we need to add some more elements here. So we need some add, add some more elements here. So the size of the tree became more than alpha x, right? So now the size is x over 2. And then to, to make this tree, this node invalid again, we need to add uh, some elements here. So the size of this tree will be more than alpha x. Or you need to remove some elements from here, same way. Uh, so how many elements do we need to add to make this tree? So we need to add uh, at least uh, alpha x minus x over two elements before next time rebalance. Right? So again, now the tree is perfectly balanced. So the size of this tree is, it is no more than x over 2. And we need, to, when we need to rebalance this x again, it means that the size of this subtree is more than alpha x. So now it's this and it should become this. So we need at least add this number of elements to make this node invalid again. 
Uh, so this is some constant. So this is actually, so it's alpha minus one over two x. Now let's calculate the time complexity for single operation. So we will calculate the amortized time we need to spend uh, to make all these recalculations. So amortized time. Well, amortized time is basically the time divided by number of operations. Yeah. So how the amortized time is called? We, we calculate total number of all operations and divide by number of, of all operations. So we spend x time. So it's time number of operations. Right. So it's x divided by uh, alpha minus x. So it's one divided by alpha minus one. So it's some constant. Sometimes we need to make some long operations. So sometimes the tree became completely invalid. So we just cut the whole tree, uh, rebalanced it and paste it back. Uh, this is a long operation. This operation takes linear time to perform. But you, when after you spend linear time to perform this operation, you have a perfectly balanced binary search tree. So the next time you need to rebalance the same tree is after you make this number of operations. And if you divide the total time by the number of operations, you will have some constant. Mm -hmm. It means that uh, for if, if you just take the amortized time, so you can use a coins method from the amortized analysis. So if you remember how we do amortized analysis, you can think about it like if you add new elements in the subtree, you just put a coin in each, uh, in each node you add in your subtree. So when you... The, Point is when you need to rebalance the whole tree, it means you have a lot of coins in your subtree, right? So because this tree is unbalanced, it means we added a lot of new elements here. And if you put coins in all new elements you added in your subtree, then the number of coins in this subtree is enough to perform this operation. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you forgot how to make a Martes analysis, you can go to the previous semester. Right? We discussed a lot amortized analysis on some strange study structures like ah yes like we, we discussed amortized analysis when we discussed split trees right so maybe you remember how to do it uh, <clears throat> that's all oh that's actually not completely correct that's not completely correct uh, i just i divided the time complexity by the number of times i added new element in the subtree so uh this this is the amortized time of the operation insert something in the subtree. Uh, actually, when you insert new element in your binary search tree, so when you insert new element here, you actually insert it not in one subtree but in all subtrees. So you you actually insert the new element in all these subtrees. Mm -hmm. So you make all these subtrees closer to the next rebalance operation, right? So when you add new element here, you make all these subtrees worse than they are now. So they're one step closer to the next rebalance operation. Uh -huh. And this one step closer actually costs you constant amount of time. Uh, so when you add new element, you spend constant amount of amortized time to make all the future rebalances of all these nodes. So actually the time complexity of one add operation is log n. That's all. That's how you make a scapegoat tree. Very cool, very easy. Still Logan. Uh, why the Mercator when Alpha Chris it actually Because I uh, no, it's not exactly like this. It's uh. Yeah, it, 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 the, the optimal the optimal value of alpha should be somewhere between one one point five and one. So, uh, actually, that, that's this kind of root because that's that's not that's not accurate enough. Because when you add some elements here, you actually increase the size of all. So, okay. actually, what you need to calculate so when you need some number of elements k here, 
So you need this x over 2 plus k should be more than alpha multiplied by x plus k. So that's the more accurate way of, to calculate this number of elements. I just say that I need alpha x. It's, that's not exactly correct. Because when you add alpha elements here, you, and you increase size of this tree and also increase the size of the whole tree. So this constant is, is actually different, but yeah. that's, that's not, not that important. There's, there, there is some constant number of elements you need to add in this subtree, and this, this, this number linearly depends on this x. So this constant before this x is actually kind of different. It's not a big deal. There's some just some another constant. So this constant is optimized when alpha is, is in some middle value between 1 over 2 and 1. So this formula is not exactly correct. There should be some different constant here. It's not a big deal. So the optimal value of alpha should be somewhere bit somewhere about 0 0.7. Now, no, 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 no. Let's let's go back to the to the problems to, to, to the problem we discussed. Uh, what will happen when you have these lists? Uh, when you uh, uh, in the problem we discussed before, in each node of your tree, you have this list of elements of your subtree. So, actually, in each node, you have this list of elements. Yeah. And so 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 each node contains the list of elements inside this subtree. Uh, what will happen? When you add new node here, you just add this value to all parents. So, let's go here. so you add new value A here, you just add this value A to all your parents. Yeah. Just add this node, add this value to all your parents. Uh, this calls your log, log square time. Uh, now, when you need to rebuild the whole tree, you actually need to rebuild the tree and also reconstruct all these uh, sorted lists. Uh, and you can do it uh, in x log x time. Yeah. So when you, if you need to maintain all these lists, then the time of reconstructing the whole tree is actually not x, but x log x. Because you need to construct all these lists and so on, so total time will be x log x. So total time complexity will be not, not log n, but log square. But log square, log square is good enough. That, that, that's the same complexity we had when, when all other versions, right? So, so log square is a good time complexity. That's all. That's how you that's how you make a scapegoat tree. Cool. Okay, we have last last thing to discuss. Let's go. Uh, the last topic will be the following. I will discuss one more data structure. Uh, it's kind of close to all, all, all the topics we discussed before, so it's close to all these binary search tree data structures, but it's kind of different. Uh, let's go. So, don't have any more questions. Can I erase this? Okay. I'll just erase this. So the final topic we'll discuss is list of the methods. What's list of the maintenance? It's a very cool data structure. It allows you basically to maintain the list and maintain order in this list. Very self <laughs> so This name is actually <laughs> quite informative. Uh -huh. So what will we do? We maintain some lists of elements. So we have some list of elements. Like linked list, right? And we want to maintain two types of operation. First operation is to insert new element in the list. Uh, let's say add after. This operation uh, takes the node x. So the node x is somewhere in your list. And insert the new value y after this node x. 
So we put the new node y, like here. So if you remember the linked lists, it's standard operation for a linked list, right? So when you when you have linked list, you just take this pointer to the next element, put it here, put pointer here, and so on. Now you insert new elements between x and the next element. Okay. And the second operation is interesting. Second operation is checks which element is before. So it's some com comparator. Uh, let's say and is before. You have, you have two elements somewhere in your linked list and you want to compare the positions of these two elements. So you want, you want to check which element is to the left in, in the sorted order of this linked list. So this element is to the left. That's all. We have two operations. Again, first operation, you take your linked list, take some node and insert another element just after this element. So between this element and the next element. And second operation checks the order of two elements. So we, we take two elements of your list and check which element is to the left, which element is to the right. It's, it's, like, a, it's like comparator of two elements in, in the linked list. Well, first of all, let's see what we can perform these two operations in log and time using binary search trees. So we can use binary search tree and make both these operations work in log and time. Let's write that like this. After and is before. Uh, if we just use binary search tree, we can add after in log and time. And which we can check if one element is before another element in log and time. Right. Looks like it's a very standard technique in binary search tree. So when you need to add element after, you just add element in, in the corresponding position and rebalance everything. When you need to check for all elements before, you can, you can find the index of each element in the sorted order. We did this in, in, in the home task. So you can, collate, you can calculate the index of x, index of y, compare these two indices, check which element is before. So it's, it's quite standard operations in the binary search tree. Right? Does everybody understand how to, how to implement both these operations using binary search trees in, in log n time? So what I was trying, what I will try to do uh, is to make the separations faster, obviously. So I want to run both the separations faster than log n time. Cool. First idea, very simple. Uh, let's maintain some numbers. So let's each node of our linked list contains some integer number. So we have we have some nodes. So this will be x. This will be z. Let's put some integer number in each node of our list and put them in sort of total solutions. One, five. 10, 26, 73. So let's try to maintain some integer numbers in all nodes of our list. Mm -hmm. Now, if we need to check which element is to the left, which element is right, we just compare this number. So if we take some two elements, we see this element have integer 10, this element have integer 100. So this element is before than this element. So we can compare two elements just by comparing this, these numbers. So these numbers will always be in the sort of order. So element to the left will have smaller number than element to the right. And now how to add new number. So 
when you add new element here, we will just put the average value of these two integers. So we will put here integer equal to 10 plus 26 divided by 2. So it's 36 divided by 2, it's 18. Right? So we'll put integer 18 in this node. So if we put average value in this node, then the sequence of integers will be will still be in sorted order. Right? That's the whole plan. So we maintain some integers in all nodes. When we add new element, we put the average value of these two elements here. And now again, all integers are in the sorted order. When we need to compare two elements, we compare these numbers. Uh, the element with a smaller number is always to the left. Right? So. Uh, let's call it number streak. Uh, so, so we can add new element in constant time and check if one and very in constant time. Right? No, all, all operations work in constant time. We add new element, put uh, average value here, we can calculate it in constant time, put it here, add it in constant time and so on. When we need to compare two elements, we compare two integers, we can compare two integers in, in constant time. Where is the trick? <laughs> it's too easy, right? So there must be there must be some problem here. It's, it's, algorithms like, like this never works in this in, in the easy way. So there must be some problem here. Yes, the problem is that we will run out of integers. So at some point we add 18 here. When we add some element between them, we put 14 here. When again we put a nonce, we put 12 here. Again, we put some element we open 11 here. And now we need to put something between 10 and 11. And we run out of integers. That's sad. So at some point, if we add a lot of elements in the same position, we will run out of integers. That will happen. Uh, but let's see, if we can use integers up to m, so if we use integers up to m, no, let's see, let's see, let's see, from 0 to m minus 1, like this. So if we have some range of integers we can use, uh, how many elements can we have in our data structure to guarantee that it's always possible to pick the correct integer? Well, if we start just, so we, have, we start by putting 0, 0 and m, yeah, right, minus 1. Then here we put m over 2, right? Then here we put m over 4, and so on. How many elements can we add to guarantee that they always be enough integers to put new value. No, I want to guarantee, I want to guarantee that for, for any sequence of insertions, there will be a good integer between these two. Again, what is the worst case? Worst case is when, when I have two integers, 0 and m, then I add something in between, so I have here m over 2, then I add something between this, I have m over 4, then I add something in between, I have m over C, uh, 8, and so on. Mm -hmm. So how many elements I, I will add until I ran out of integers? Well, it's, it's actually much less than, than m. Let's see, if, if, if I have, here I have 0, here I have, let's say, 20. Six. Then first I will add middle element is 128, then I have middle element 68, and so on. So I, I will add about eight elements until I run out of integers. So it's it's not m, it's log m, yeah. So I can add um, uh, no more than log m elements. So 
if I have at most log m elements, I will be fine because there was, there's always be at least one integer between two integers in, in my data structure, right? Let's, 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 let's we have no more than log m elements. So that's a working method when you have a small number of elements. If you have small number of elements and you have big integers, then you can do this. Cool. Now, what happens when you have a, a big number of elements? Then you can you, you need to do something much more intelligent. Let's go. Uh, what happens when you have a big number of elements? We will use kind of the same technique. We will assign integer value to each element, but we will assign them in a, very, in a different way. We will build a scapegoat tree. Let's build a scapegoat tree. Like this. Uh -huh. Okay, you, you have some seven elements. So you have elements A, B, C, D, E, and F. So you have some list of elements. So each node of your scapegoat tree represents one element of your list. So A, B, C, D, E, No one saw. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we will represent this list as a scapegoat tree. And now we will assign the special numbers to all elements. The special number will work like this. So to assign the number to the element, we will look on the path from the root to this element. Let's look on this path and construct the following binary number. So we will go to the left. We will add two zeros to our binary number. So, uh, so for this element, it will be zero, zero. So for this element, it will be zero, 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 zero. For this one, it will be zero, 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 zero. Now in the end, we will add zero, one. And we will maintain it in, in, in the same size, like this. Hmm? So these are some binary numbers we will, which we will assign to these elements. So again, how this binary number is constructed? We will look on the path from the root to this element. So we need to go to the left, then to the left, then to the right. Then the binary number assigned to this element will be 0, 0, then 0, 0, then 1, 1. And in the, in the end, we will add 0, 1, just to mark that, that we finish here. So for this element, we go to the left, then stop. For this element, we go to the left, then go to the left, then stop. For then left, 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 and stop. For this element, we go to the left, then go to the right, and then stop. So left, right, stop. Uh, for this element, we go to the right, then go to the right, then stop. So right, right, stop. For this, we go, no, it's just right. Right, then stop. For this element, go to the right, then go to the right, then stop. Yes, and for the root, we just stop. Zero, one, zero, zero. So that's how I will assign the numbers to all elements. So this number assigned to the element depends on the path from the root to this element. So each time when I go to the left, I add two zeros. When I move to the right, I add two ones. 
Now, when I stop, I add 0 and 1. And then I will just add zeros to make all the numbers the same length. F have extra... No. No, all, all, all integers have a, a, a 8 bits, right? I have 8 bits here, 8 bits here, 8 bits here. So I'll just add zeros to make all integers the same length. So I have all, all integers are now 8 bits length. No, so what, what numbers do I have? So here I have... So it's 2, 4, 16, so it's 2, 4, 16, 32, no, 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 that's right, so, so. <clears throat> 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 36, 64, so this number is 64. Uh, this number is 2, 4, 8, 16. So this number is 16. This number is 4. This number is 1. This number is... Uh, it's, it's tricky. So it's 32 plus 16. It's 48 plus 4. So it's 52, right? Ooh, this number is 64 plus 128, it's 100 and so it's plus 64, it's 192, right? And plus this, uh, this is, this is 16, this is 16, right? So it's uh, 208, right? Right? I hate arithmetic. I hope it's also. So this binary number corresponds to this decimal number, right? And this number is actually it's 255 minus this, minus this. Uh, this one is, is for 8, minus 11. So it's 244. Right? That's all. So these are the numbers we will assign to each node. Uh, I claim that these numbers are sorted from left to right. No, why, why is the number sorted? Because all numbers to the left start with two zeros, all numbers to the right start with two ones, and the middle number start with zero one. So, so if you look on some node, here you have zero zero something, here you have one one something, and here you have zero one. So all elements here will be less than this, all elements here will be greater than this. So all these numbers will be sorted from left to right. That's the whole plan. Now, what will be the length of this number? How many bits do we need actually to store these numbers? So the length of this number is two multiplied by height of the tree. Uh, height of the tree, again, if you pick, let's say we pick alpha equal to one over square root of two, then height of the tree is no more than two log n, right? Then the size of this number is at most four log n. Okay. So we need four log n bits to store this numbers. Four log n is good enough. You can store four log n bits. Because if you have input of size n, it means you can count at least up to n, right? So usually I assume that I can count all the numbers in the input, right? Uh, so if you can count all the numbers in the input, you can count up to n. If you can count up to n, you have integers of size at least log n. So four log n is good. Why not float? Because floating numbers still have some precision problems. Floating point numbers are not infinite. If you if you try to pick 
number in the middle, very soon you will reach the uh, maximal possible precision of your uh, float point numbers. So you, 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 you cannot just divide floating point numbers infinitely. At some point you will pick two consecutive floating point numbers. That's the whole plan. That's the whole plan. So, so what we will do again, the whole idea is to assign some numbers to all elements of our linked list. So we maintain this link. So we have this linked list. We will assign some numbers to all elements of this linked list. We will assign numbers like this using this scapegoat tree. This is a scapegoat tree with alpha equal to one. It doesn't matter with some alpha. We will maintain this scapegoat tree. We will maintain these values. These values will be uh, like correspond to position of this element in this linked list. Uh, now, when we need to check if one element is before another element, we will take these two numbers, compare these two numbers. Element to the left will always have the smaller number than element to the right. That's all. Uh, so we will. So we use scapegoat tree. We can maintain is before in constant time, but when we add new element, we need to add new element, recalculate values, and so on. So adding new element to scapegoat tree still costs you log on time. Is it clear by now? It's, it's complicated stuff. It's not something. It's, it's not not trivial at all. So, it's, if you have any questions by now, it's good time to ask them. So again, the, the idea is pretty simple. We try to assign some numbers to all elements uh, to be able to compare to elements just by comparing these two numbers. And this is just the way how we assign these numbers. We assign these numbers using the structure of this scapegoat tree. So we build this scapegoat tree and use the structure of this scapegoat tree to assign these numbers. And it will help us to maintain these numbers sorted. Cool. Why we need scapegoat tree? Why don't you use just some avial tree, something like that? So I just said I will use scapegoat tree, but it, it looks like I only need some balance search tree. Why, 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 why I need to use especially a scapegoat tree? Why can I use, for example, avail trees, strips, splay trees, any other binary search tree? No, it's actually like before, because uh, in all other binary search trees, you need to make rotations. Uh, when you make rotation, yeah, Again, let's let's rotate something. Uh, you have this node X, you have this node P. Make this node X here. Okay, B C. B C. So if you look on some node inside this subtree, some some node here. Then the path to this node will change after this rotation. So if you take any node inside these subtrees and look on the path, so here this path is like this, and now the path is, is different. So the path to this element is changing after we make rotation. So we need to change the number assigned to this element. And there are a lot of elements here, a lot of elements here, a lot of elements here. So we need to, re to recalculate all the numbers in all these subtrees. There are a lot of numbers. We cannot make rotations, but in scapegoat tree we don't need we, we don't need to make rotations. We only recalculate the whole tree from scratch. So and we can do it when we need to recalculate the whole tree. We just again we, we cut the whole tree, make perfectly balanced binary search tree, put the corresponding numbers in each node, and then paste the balanced search tree back. And this doesn't this, this this doesn't change all the numbers in all other nodes. So all the, if you when you put something in the scapegoat tree, the place of this element is fixed until the next rebalance. So 
So when you put some elements here, it will stay in this place until you rebuild the whole subtree. But when you rebuild the whole subtree, you can assign the new number. Mm -hmm. no, because you spent linear time when you make rebalance. You can assign these numbers as well. So in structures like this, when you cannot make rotations, you can use scapegoat tree and it will allow you to do all, all, all operations you need, but without rotations. Okay, the final point. Uh, final point. I still have this slogan. I don't like this slogan. I want to have both operations in constant time. So the final thing. How to make both operations in constant time? Um, very simple, actually. We we will do it following. So let, let's let's look on our. So this is our linked list. Let's split linked list into blocks. The size of each block will be at at least log n divided by two, and at most log n. So these are the elements uh, we need to maintain here. We will split these elements into blocks. And now for each block, we will have one element of our scapegoat tree. So for each block, we will create one element and we will build scapegoat tree of these blocks. So something like this, let's say. So each element So each element, each element of this scapegoat tree corresponds to some block of elements in our list. That's all. Now, how to compare two elements? So you have element X and you have element Y. Uh, how to check if element X is before element Y? Let's find two blocks corresponding to this element. So each element have link to this element corresponding to this block. So we have these links from here to here. So each element have link to this to, 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 to this uh, node of the scapegoat tree corresponding to this block. So we take node X, take the link to this node, take element Y to click to this node. Now we just compare these two nodes using this technique. So if X and Y belong to different blocks, then we check which block is actually to the left in, in this order. So this block has some number, this block has some number. If they belong to different blocks, we take the number from this block, number for this block, compare these two numbers, see which element is before. If X and Y belong to the same block, then we need some technique to distinguish elements in, 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 in the same block. But in the same block, we can use this technique. Because size of the block is at least log n. So we can use this technique inside block. So inside each block, we will just maintain these numbers and assign the average of value when we add new number. And between blocks, we will use this technique. It's called ma ma micro macro heuristics, actually. That's techniques like this, when you split something in, into small chunks, like about log n size, and then use some, some technique inside this block and some techniques when you create in, between, between different blocks. Uh, that's all. Now again, what happens? You split your list into blocks. In each block, you can compare two numbers using this technique because the size of the block is at least is at most log n. So you can assign numbers up to n inside this block and you will be all right. Uh, when you need to compare two blocks, you use this technique. You just put each, you put all blocks into a scapegoat, scapegoat tree and maintain these numbers in a scapegoat tree. 
when you x and y belong to different blocks, you take these two numbers, compare these two numbers, and see which number is smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what happens when you insert new element? When you insert new element, let's see. So again, uh, you can now you can compare two elements in constant time. So this, so it's keep got three plus these numbers. Again, you can compare two elements in constant time. If two elements belong to the same block, you use this technique. If they belong to different blocks, you use this technique. That's all. Now, how to add new element? So you you, ha you have some number x here. Let's see here. So we have some number x. And you want to add a new number y here. After this x. You just as you, you again you, you let me, let me. I need I need it to be slightly bigger. So you have some block of elements. Here we have element x, here we have element z. I want to add new element after x. So I want a new element y here between y between x and z. So I put new elements between these two elements and assign the number as the average of this x and z. That's all. Uh, if this block become too big. So, so one and see one equals to x plus z right now. So it's step one. Mm -hmm. I add new element and assign the value equal to average of these two. Uh, now step two, when block is too big. So when I have block more than log n size. Uh, then I will split this block into two blocks. And when I split block into two blocks, I need to add new element in this scape code tree. So now, so now I have one element here. So this element corresponds to this block. I have link to this node from all elements of this block. Right? So now when I split this block, I have the same element here. But I need to create a new element corresponding to this second. So I create a new element, put links to this element here. And I need to new add this new node into scapegoat tree. Right? So this operation costs me log n time. So this, this I can make in, in constant time, right? So I can add element in the middle, assign this value in constant time. But this operation costs me log n time. So when block is too big, I need to split this block, create new node, make the links to this new node, and then put this node in the scapegoat tree. This all operation costs me log n time, right? Uh, but the amortized time will be constant. Why? Because let's see, if we make this split, then each of these blocks have size log n divided by two. Mm -hmm. So it's half the size of the maximal possible size. So both these blocks are far from the next balancing operation. Again, we will split these blocks only after we add log n over two more elements in the same block. So both these blocks are log n over two operations before next rebounds. Right? So the amortized time of, uh, of one add operation is log n divided by the number of this version. So it's cost. Mm. 
basically what we did uh, we tried not we, we try to make this insertion we, we I erase this we use this technique with scapegoat tree but the insertion in this in this scapegoat tree is uh, is expensive yes we spent log and time to make new insertion in this scapegoat tree so we try not to make insertions each time we add new element but we try to make these insertions only when we only when we need to so we split all elements in the block so each each element of the scapegoat tree corresponds to some logon elements in our linked list and now we need to make insertions only uh, after like logon operations in our link, linked list so we make operations in the linked list but when the block is too big we make the split and then we need to make one operation in the scapegoat tree but it happens every logon operation. So every logon operations, we need to spend logon time to make this split. So the average time of one operation will be constant. That's all. Okay, that, <laughs> that was actually high level. Uh, data structure um, so it's kind of a little bit more interesting than a regular binary search trees but still that, 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 that's something interesting so not, not all algorithms are that easy as like simple evil trees stuff like this so sometimes you need to make something more complicated and that's, that's actually not, not that's not the most complicated data structure we'll discuss in this course actually but so Okay, <clears throat> I believe that's all for today.